right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our friend David Cole stopped in. And, you know, David's been with a few companies over the years. And uh, he always manages to turn up with some good wine. So, And uh, this day he had uh, kind of a mixed bag, I would say. Some stuff from uh, Aglianico, some stuff from Campania, Falangina, and Aglianico. And then uh, a really good Chablis producer, man, this Patrick Puise wine. Wow, man, all of these wines, textbook Chablis, a little Rhone stuff. So uh, we started out with this Castello Ducale wine, which Falangina is kind of like the everyday grape they grow down there. This wine's uh, really unique, though, some pretty perfumey lavender, kind of stone fruit, apricots, kind of like quinine tonic character, this wine, really light and refreshing on the palate, a bit of spice in that quinine orange peel note on the end. Uh, very good little wine, very distinct, the Falangina, 1950. All right, and then the Aglianico, the great red grape of the south. This is a big wine. It's got a wild side to it, dark spices, herbs, a bit of an animal quality, and uh, bright and zesty, though. This is a more everyday style, the fine tannins, red berry, plum fruit showing a little bit of that wild character on the finish, roasted meats, herbs, and spice, a very good little wine, uh, 1950. And then uh, the Chablis lineup, you've got Monte de Tenor, Fourcham, Dicouvert, uh, Bourgros. Uh, so we went from Village all the way through Premier Cru and Grand Cru this tasting. All these wines having that textbook seashell minerality you get from that chalky limestone soil of Chablis. A very unique terroir <laughs> and the ultimate expression of Chardonnay with this grape you can keep, within this terroir you can keep for 20, 30 years. I'll never forget my visit to Ravenel where he poured us an unlabeled bottle and uh, we all just stood there and uh, marveled at the fact, man, this is fresh as a day. No, None of us could have imagined it would have been from the 1978 vintage. Wow. Uh, these 2012s, a classic vintage for Chablis. Really juicy vintage too. A lot of nice fruit. The uh, Découvert is a uh, Kind of your textbook village Chablis, briny notes, fresh sea breeze, uh, chalky minerality, lemon, citrus, and white floral notes to this wine. Really nice tart lemon and green apple on the tongue. That tang, tongue tingly minerality you get from Chablis. That sweet tart effect. Uh, really textbook Chablis. 30 bucks, very good juice. And then the Monte de Tenere, man. This is like times two that seashell minerality on the nose. Really intense lemon and citrus fruit, uh, lemon citrus and green apple fruit. Lovely intensity on the palate, that chalky minerality, leaving your tongue just tantalized and wanting some food here. I wish I had some oysters or something to drink to eat with that, man. Wow, long mineral lace finish. It's 78 bucks. Man, a little expensive. Man, usually Premier Cruise, you can find a little bit less than that, but I mean... Um, these wines are really good. The Four Sham, also excellent. This is my favorite Chablis. Even as good as the Grand Cru, which uh, this wine had that sea breeze quality. Wonderful intensity of fruit. That uh, apple and lemon. Kind of a lemon meringue pie kind of note to it. Uh, nice briny character as it opened up. Just wonderful richness and concentration on the tongue. Lovely creamy texture. That's what you get. That minerality gives you the impression of cream on the tongue when it's this intense. Really long and layered finish. Most excellent juice. And then the Grand Cru. There's seven Grand Cru's or eight Grand Cru's. I don't know who's counting. In Chablis. And uh, the Bourgros, one of the lesser known ones. And just the pure essence of that chalky seashell minerality shining through on the nose here. A bit of that tart lemon lime zest. The green apple. Really focused and intense wine on the tongue. This wine took a long time to open up. On the second day, wow. Really, still, even bigger on the second day, that fruit in the wine, that tongue-tingly seashell minerality, and uh, that salty, chalky texture. Really excellent juice. This wine's going to last for 20 or 30 years. All right, and then some stuff from the Rhone. We had a little Cote de Rhone, Vigneux Nobles David. And, uh, well, just so happens, David Cole was showing the wine, so a wine named after him. A blend of Syrah, Mouvedre, and Carignan. Kind of unique because there's no Grenache in it. Most Cote de Rhone's have a little Grenache in them. Really nice bacony, mushroomy, uh, smoky animal notes to the berry pie fruit. A good amount of that herbs and the light smoke. Really pretty wine on the tongue, too. This wine's got an array of wildflowers, herbs, a nice touch of spice, and uh, that animal character showing through on the finish from that Mouvedre. Uh, 2250. The Farad Brunel, Cote de Rhone Village. Uh, this wine's 80% Grenache. Ding, ding, ding. There's your Grenache. Like I said, most Cote d'Arons have Grenache and uh, predominantly Grenache. This one's 20% Syrah. Good amount of dark berry pie fruit here. Game-like character, kind of mineral notes there. Black pepper spice. Fresh, pretty floral notes. Really smooth wine on the tongue. This 2012 vintage, very juicy. A lot of nice fruit and that berry pie uh, fruit and that fresh floral notes from the nose showing through the finish. Uh, really 
Very good little bottle of Cote de Rhone at 20 25 And then the Ferrar Brunel Chetneuf de Pop, the big boy. This is also mostly Grenache, a little bit of Mauvedre and Syrah in there. Spiced berry pie fruit on the nose, a new leather, kind of a potpourri of floral notes, black pepper spice, really delicious berry fruit on the tongue. This wine just has a lovely zesty spice to it, those pretty floral notes, sweet herbs, that what they call garrigue in French. See, all the stuff you see when you're looking out the window, driving by on the countryside, these wild flowers and herbs just grow wild down there. And you put your nose at the car window and you can just smell it. That's what Chetneuf de Pop is about. Anyways, this is excellent juice at $49.50. And then the Vin Sobres, which is, uh, well, it's a lesser known appellation. This wine's 60 Grenache, 15 Syrah, 15 Cinso, 10 Mouvedre. Kind of typical bouquet, that wild berry pie, red and black dark spices, licorice, wildflowers. Really nice complexity on the nose here. You can get some really good stuff in this region for, well, I don't want to say a fraction of the cost because they're they're uh, you know right about the same price as Cote de Rhone's and similar to me in uh, complexity and uh, in quality. And this wine has a really nice finish. 2011, a more forward vintage, a little lighter, but uh, drink them up at a younger age. That's what we had to drink. Drinking with David on the coal train. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.